Solo Leveling by Chu Gong. Bonus Stories 5 Part 2 Late at night, Detective Chinchul Wu and the rookie were having dinner at a restaurant specializing in grilled offal. Since they'd been drinking a lot, their lips were looser than usual, and the rookie especially found it easier to talk more freely than normal. Uh, Detective Wu, hmm? You're still investigating these cases involving criminals who turn themselves in, right? What was this dude getting at now? Jinchul could feel a headache coming on as he continued to drink without saying a word. Meanwhile, the rookie continued his line of questioning without missing a beat. That day, you saw something, didn't you? What day? Jinchul feigned ignorance, but the rookie detective laughed. Come on, Detective Wu. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You actually saw something the day that criminal disappeared, didn't you? This newbie really knew how to catch people off guard every so often. That's a great skill for a detective. Jinchul reminisced about his early detective days and couldn't stop his small laugh. What if I did? Seriously? The rookie seemed to shake off his tipsiness as his eyes lit up, and he gave Jinchul his full attention. He was, after all, closer in age to a college student than someone used to the 9-to-5 grind. That's why he likely voluntarily applied to the Violent Crimes Investigation Unit, which paid little but involved a heavy workload. Jinchul was normally tight-lipped about matters like this, but whether it was the drink or he'd just been dying to talk to someone about it. It was an, an ant monster. The rookie swallowed so hard that Jinchul could hear him from across the table. I'm not even sure what exactly I saw on that day, but they look like ants to me. Ant monsters? You saw huge ants? Well, they were ants, but... At that moment, a drunk stumbling past the two of them came to a halt. Th those ant monsters. Did they have human bodies with ant heads? Jinchul and the rookie spun to face the newcomer. There's a saying that the ground hardens after a rainfall. People might grow closer after a fight, but the bond of sweat and passion formed between boys was unbreakable. One, two, one, two. The morning mist blanketed the field as the track team counted out their pace. You doing okay, Jean Wu? Jean Wu called back from his place next to the captain, Tai Wung. You know it. Awesome. One, two, one, two. Tai Wung sped up a little as he yelled at the top of his lungs. Our goal is number one in Korea. Our goal is number one in. His teammates stopped short of completing the changed call and response. Captain! Wasn't our goal to win the local competition? Come on! That goal is too small for our new ace. Again! Our goal is number one in Korea. Number one in Korea. Number one in Korea. The captain glanced at San Jin, who was running right behind him. San Jin, are you crying? In no, captain! You're the ace of the second years. Don't be weak. The ace of the team might have changed, but we can't be number one in Korea without you. I'll do my best, Captain. Excellent. Number one in Korea. 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 Young Gil who had been roped into the track team alongside Jean Wu, struggled to keep up in the middle of the pack. He seemed to be growing paler by the second. Huff, huff, huff! Jean Wu clicked his tongue hearing Young Gil panting so hard. He had recommended Young Gil join the team to build up his stamina, and his friend hadn't resisted the idea, but it was probably only a matter of time before he passed out at this rate. But with the older students being so gung-ho about training, it would be difficult for young Gil to sit out for the rest of it. Jean Wu had no choice but to gather some mana on the tip of his fingers and send it flying to young Gil. 
The manna rode the wind like dandelion spores and entered Yumgil's nose and mouth. The manna instantly recovered his stamina and temporarily increased endurance, reaction time, flexibility, the rate of recovery, etc. It was a care package of buffs from Jin Wu to his friend, and because the Shadow Monarch had been a deity-like figure in the other world, the effectiveness of his buffs was impressive. Huh? What? Young Gil's eyes widened after inhaling the mana. WH what's going on? My body? My body feels like it's burning. Veins bulged on Young Gil's legs as they pushed against the ground. Tack, tack, tack. Young Gil began to pass the older kids in front of him. Oh! He eventually pulled ahead of the pack. What? Tai Wung was inspired by Young Gil's spurt. That rookie is on fire. Come on, guys. We can't let a freshie beat us. Yeah, Captain. Right, Captain. Catch up to the rookie. Let's go. Go, go. Yeah. Jean Wu worried for a second that he may have given Young Gil a bit too much of a boost, but the track and field team was on fire that day. As the venomous snake, Kissel, welcomed students at the main gate, he also kept a watchful eye from a distance on the track team members, who had been training hard since earlier that morning. Despite his concerns, Jean Wu seemed to have adjusted to the team without causing any trouble. The principal had even credited Kissel for it this morning. The track team's coach told me that you've been keeping an eye on Jean Wu Sung. Um, that's right. We have you to thank for keeping the problem student out of trouble. I know I can count on you. Oh, considering how Kissel had collapsed or passed out every time he'd looked at Jean Wu thus far, he wanted to crawl into a hole as the principal heaped praises on him. Kissel hated how he couldn't bring himself to even look at Jean Wu despite the principal thinking so highly of him. That was why he had gotten drunk and shared things with strangers he normally wouldn't. Why did I do that? Kissel wanted to pull his hair out whenever he thought back to that night. A few days ago, he had gone to that awful restaurant because he was so stressed out. That was where he... TH those ant monsters! Did they have human bodies with ant heads? When Jinchil and the rookie had turned to look at him, Kissel felt like he had instantly sobered up. Oh, what am I saying? I'm sorry. I drank too much. Please don't mind me. Kissel politely bowed to the two men and was about to go back to his table, but Jinchil stopped him. Hang on, sir. By the time Kissel turned around, his face flushed from alcohol, Jinchil had already pulled out the chair next to him. This at monster. Can you give us any more details about it? Who would Kissel tell about seeing strange things next to one specific student? Maybe a psychiatrist? What parents would approve of a teacher who had to see a shrink? Having had to keep this to himself all this time, Kissel opened up to Jinchil with tears in his eyes. You know, I've taught students with charisma before, but would I explain this to anyone else? He felt better as soon as he got it off his chest. He felt like he could finally take in what was going on around him. Anyway, why were two detectives like you talking about monsters in a place like this? Jinchil exchanged glances with the rookie detective before launching into an explanation without revealing anything regarding his own encounter. So the higher-ups gave us an order to investigate, but clues were hard to come by. It's been like grasping at straws. Jinchil took out a business card from the inside pocket of his jacket. I'd like to stop by the school as part of the investigation. Are you okay with that? Oh, of course. We will gladly cooperate. Please come by anytime. Although the drinking session ended on a friendly note, Kissel worried afterward whether he had stirred the pot for no reason. What on earth would a student have to do with criminals turning themselves in? Least of all, a boy who trained hard with his team so early in the morning. 
Kissel couldn't bring himself to take a good look at Jean Wu for fear of spotting something strange again. He periodically snuck a peek at the student, but would then quickly shake his head. He eventually talked to a fellow teacher at the main gate. Mr. Yun, I'm sorry, but I don't feel good. I had too much to drink last night. Uh-huh. No need to apologize, Mr. Park. Please go inside and take it easy. I've got this. Okay, thank you. Kissel took one final glance at Jean Wu before trudging into the school. Up to that point, Jean Wu hadn't shown any interest in Kissel, but he finally looked in his direction. Jean Wu had noticed the teacher keeping an eye on him, which Jean Wu couldn't ignore. Bellian quietly spoke to Jean Wu from the darkness. My lord, wouldn't it be better to erase that human's memories and take away his sight? Upon Jin Wu's return from the gap between dimensions, the envoy of the rulers had given him a warning. Even the tiniest bit of the shadow monarch's power could affect this world in a big way. And so Jin Wu had tried to avoid interfering directly with anyone unless it was absolutely necessary. Not yet. Let's keep an eye on him first. Understood, my lord. Jean Wu stared at the entrance Kissel had walked through before turning around. The members of the track team waved at him to join them as they made their way to the locker room. Jinchil hesitated a few times in front of the school's main gate. It was a week ago at that awful restaurant that he had gotten the unexpected lead. Ever since, a myriad of thoughts had raced through his head. He could just dismiss the teacher's explanation as nonsense. But when two seemingly unrelated incidents turned out to have a similarity, there could be a huge break in the case. Criminals turning themselves in after seeing monsters, and a teacher who can see monsters surrounding a student. It was an odd coincidence, so he had a hunch that they were connected. His biggest problem was how to approach the student. He couldn't take what the teacher had said as fact and bring up monsters out of the blue. However, he wouldn't get anywhere if he was too vague with his line of questioning. Do you know anything about a shadow monster? How about an ant that walks on two legs like a human? No matter how much he rehearsed it, it didn't come out right. Jinchil sighed as he went through his notes for the investigation. It'll be a miracle if he doesn't think I'm crazy. Jinchil thought about it for a while, and then turned to leave. It wasn't the right time for this, and he needed a better excuse for being here. As he was about to leave, he happened to look down at the ground. SHF. Jinchil was known among his peers for having keen eyes. If it wasn't for that, he would have missed the shadow moving from the shade of a tree over to the wall. He was sure of what he saw. Goosebumps spread over his body as Jinchil turned towards school. There, there is definitely something here. Jinchil made up his mind. He didn't care if people pointed their fingers at him and called him crazy. He was determined to find out where this sense of loss was coming from and why seeing those and monsters had brought him a semblance of peace. Jinchil resolutely strode through the gates. Meanwhile, Jean Wu was spinning his mechanical pencil in one hand during geography class while several kids dozed off around him. Did he see the sentry? As expected of the former president of the Hunters Association, Jinchil didn't have any memories from his past life, but it looked like he had the same keen eyesight. Jean Wu thought back to the last time he'd seen Jinchil. The other man had shown tears when Jean Wu announced he was going to take on the rulers all by himself. And Jean Wu clearly remembered Jinchil's voice asking him to avenge President Go. Maybe that was why Jean Wu couldn't get rid of the smile on his face, despite this disruption to the normal life he'd been trying to have. The knock on the classroom door caught the geography teacher off guard. A D detective? It's nothing serious. I just have some questions to ask Jean Wu Sung. Oh! The kids in the classroom gasped at the detective's arrival 
and stared at Jean Wu. The time had come. With a smile, Jean Wu opened his eyes and made eye contact with Jinchul. Even before the teacher called on him, Jinchul could tell right away who he was. Ba dump, be a dump, be a dump. Jinchul's heart felt like it would explode. Jinchul led Jean Wu to the end of the hall, stopping far away enough so no one could hear their conversation. Jean Wu quietly followed him, glancing back at the classroom. As a student, he felt quite odd to be leaving in the middle of the class. Jinchul understood his concern and started with an apology. I'm sorry to pull you out of class. It's okay. Because he could see how hard his teacher worked, Jin Wu bit his tongue to keep from admitting the class was boring, and he was glad to skip it. Instead, he looked up at Jinchul. This Jinchul Wu was younger than the one he'd known and currently a head taller than Jin Wu. His shoulders were much broader than Jin Wu's, too. He looks more like a gangster than a detective. Jin Wu couldn't hide his happiness at seeing an old friend once more. It had been decades since he'd seen President Wu, if he counted the time he'd wandered around the gap between dimensions. Though he tried not to, his face broke into a smile. On the other hand, Jinchul didn't know what to make of Jin Wu smiling. Few people could act relaxed when receiving a sudden visit from a detective like this, especially one with Jinchul's countenance. A high school student should be even less at ease, but the boy standing before Jinchul was able to smile. This kid, there's something different about him. Jinchul had felt it ever since he entered the classroom. In his line of work, Jinchul had encountered serial killers and gangsters who ruled entire neighborhoods, but none of them seemed as poised as Jin Wu. How could a student have eyes like that? The tension made Jinchul swallow nervously as his heart pounded in his ears. For starters, Jinchul took out his notepad to begin asking some questions swimming around in his head. By any chance did a shadow? No, I mean an ant. He cut himself off as he stared at his notebook before pulling a pen out from the inner pocket of his jacket. Jin Wu watched Jinchul as the detective concentrated on drawing something. Jinchul handed the finished product to Jin Wu. Jin Wu was impressed. I won't lie, he's pretty good. Jinchul had drawn a rough sketch of Baru. It wasn't very detailed, but the drawing showed an ant's head, human limbs, sharp claws, and wings. Anyone who knew Baru would immediately recognize that it depicted him. Does this bring anything to mind? asked Jinchul. Jin Wu looked up to see that Jinchul was blushing a little bit. The detective was fully aware that what he was doing was quite absurd, but it seemed like he was desperately searching for his long-lost memories. Do you recognize it? Jinchul pressed. Before the detective could get any more embarrassed, Jin Wu answered him. Yes! Bottom! Jinchul's heart leaped. Why you do? His voice grew louder. In contrast, Jin Wu seemed rather calm. Yes! Jinchul's eyes widened. Finally, he'd finally found it. Breathless, he hurriedly asked Jin Wu, What is this ant monster? And who are you really? When Jin Wu stepped back at Jinchul's agitation, the detective realized his mistake and calmed down. Sorry, I got too excited. I've been after this thing for a long time. Jinchul needed to take it one step at a time when questioning this student. It had been hard enough to get this far with the clues he had, so there was no need to rush. Jinchul reined himself in and continued in a calmer voice. So you're familiar with the creature depicted in this drawing? Yes. Ji Wu nodded with an innocent look on his face. Isn't this a monster from one of those shows that use special effects? Like Cayman Rider. Oh. Jinchul was struck with a profound sense of defeat. Like an ocean wave sweeping away a sandcastle he had worked on so diligently. He gave a small sigh. It was all the more crushing because he had such high hopes. 
Jinchul looked as if he didn't even have enough energy to hold up his notepad. His arm fell limply to his side. For a moment, he was upset at the boy for giving him false hope. But it wasn't the boy's fault for merely saying what he knew. Thank you for your time. Are we done here? Yes. I've already spoken to your teacher, so there shouldn't be a problem. Jinchul was about to put away his notepad when Jean Wu spoke up. That monster drawing, can I have it as a souvenir? Jin Wu's happiness coaxed a smile out of Jinchul as well. He flipped through his notepad and gazed down at his drawing for a moment before ripping the page out cleanly and handing it to Jean Wu. Here, thank you. With that, Jinchul turned and walked down the stairs, not wanting to stick around too long and think of what could have been. Jin Wu stayed and listened to Jinchul's footsteps going down the stairs. A shadow spread out smoothly across the floor like water to let Igris out. My lord. Yeah. Why, didn't you tell him the truth? Igris still had memories from the time he used to be human. He knew better than anyone how sad and hard it was to be forgotten. From his point of view, this encounter with Jinchul had been a great opportunity. Wouldn't it be better for Jinwu if he had at least one person who knew how he had saved this world? Igra sounded regretful, but Jean Wu shook his head. They say ignorance is bliss. Even if it was the forced result of the forbidden tool, Jean Wu didn't think he had the right to choose which memories were forgotten and which ones remained. That would be the act of a god. That's why he had let Jinchul go. Is that so? Yeah. Jean Wu suddenly looked down at his left hand. It had taken a direct hit from the Dragon King's breath of destruction and would not heal. An unpleasant and unforgettable memory was similar to Jin Wu's burn. It was a permanent scar. Although it was Jin Chul's wish, it wasn't up to Jean Wu to grant said. Wish. There was no trace of pain or suffering at the hands of magic beasts or monarchs in anyone's memory, and Jin Wu had no intention of giving those memories back. I understand, my lord. Igris quietly returned to the shadows. Jin Wu stared down at the stairs for a while before going back to class. At recess, all eyes were on Jin Wu. After all, how often did a detective visit a school just to speak to a student. It was like something out of a movie. Obviously, everyone was focused on the hero of the story. Even the girls, who had already been interested in Jean Wu joined in on the crowd flocking around him. What was that about? What did the detective want with you, Jean Wu? Jean Wu laughed at everyone's sudden interest in him and quickly came up with an excuse. He's just someone I know. He wanted to ask me something. Wow, that's cool. Are you close to the detective? Must be nice, Jean Wu. Jean Wu found it hard to hold back his laughter as the kid's interests were piqued by different things than he'd assumed. Why are you looking at me like a proud mom, young Gil? Thanks to the detective's visit, the invisible wall between Jean Wu and his classmates had now crumbled. The girl seized the opportunity to approach him. The other boys were saying you're totally buff. Really? Do you work out, Jean Wu? I've seen you running track with the seniors. Wow, look at his broad shoulders. He he he. Just when Jean Wu was trying to work out a good way to get these girls to go back to their seats, they were interrupted by the four bullies who were disgruntled that he was the center of attention. You're quite popular, aren't you? Even the police came to see you. As they approached, the other boys went back to their seats, and the girls silently stepped back. Junchik Nam, the leader of the pack, smirked as he tapped Jin Wu's shoulder where the girls had touched him earlier. Does joking around like this count as bullying? Are you going to tell the detective? If this boy continued to hit Jin Wu, Junchik would be the one to get hurt. Sure enough, Junchik flushed at the combination of Jinwu's look of pity 
and his throbbing hand. What the hell are you looking at? Junchik flung everything off Jinwa's desk. Textbooks, notebooks, and his pencil case hit the floor. From the shadows, ten million shadow soldiers cried out at what they were witnessing. Junchik then grabbed Jinwa's collar as Jinwa's eyes narrowed. What? You wanna go? Wipe that look off your face while I'm still being nice. At that moment, a huge arm wrapped around Junchik's neck. Ard, you got business with our precious track team ace? It was Taiwan and Gushing. Jinwa's four classmates grew pale as the seniors put them all in headlocks. Jin Wu wordlessly stood from his seat and picked up his pencil case. Jaina had given it to him as a gift for starting high school. If it had gotten damaged in any way, he wouldn't have let that slide. Jin Wu dusted it off and put it on his desk before turning to Tai Wung and gushing. What are you doing here? We're here to stop you from beating these dummies to a pulp. Yeah, right. Ha 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 ha. Tai Wung let out a belly laugh before he continued. I forgot to tell you guys about the team welcome party. You and Young Gil have time today, right? When Jean Wu looked to Young Gil, his friend nodded. Yes. We'll see you two after school then. Jean Wu stopped the seniors as they left the class. Wait, where are you taking them? Ha uh ha. -huh. These four? Tai Wung and Gushik exchanged looks. You got any ideas? Should we do a lap for some light exercise? Sounds good. Soon shouts of number one in Korea echoed through the halls. Ding dong, ding dong. When the final dismissal bell rang, Jin Woo exited the school's main gate with the members of the track team. Thanks to Jin Woo's occasional support, Young Gil had gotten used to training with the team and had even learned to enjoy breaking a sweat. He walked alongside the older kids, listening to their advice as Jin Wu brought up the rear. It was a normal day, just like any other. Gushik looked back at Jin Wu from the front of the crowd. Oh yeah, Jin Wu. What was up with those four today? Do you need us to talk to them? Jin Wu shook his head. Nah, it's okay. I'm not saying this because I'm worried about you, okay? I just don't want you to miss any competitions because of them. Jin Wu grinned. I promise I won't. At that moment, someone suddenly waiting next to the school gates called out to them. Hunter Jean Wu Sung. Time seemed to stop as Jean Wu abruptly stopped walking and slowly turned around. Detective Jin Chul Wu had been waiting for him. Jin Wu's voice was shaky. How? His response confirmed Jin Chul's suspicions. Jin Chul's eyes grew red as he fought back tears. It really is you, Hunter Sum. That monster drawing, can I have it as a souvenir? A few hours earlier, Jin Wu had asked for the drawing of Baru drawn by Jinchil as a souvenir of their reunion. It really looks like Baru, so a protest came from his shadow. My king, I beg of you to pay no heed to those rubbish scribbles. As Jin Wu ignored Baru's whining, Jinchil looked down at his drawing for a beat as if trying to shake off any disappointment before cleanly ripping it out of his notepad and handing it to Jin Wu. Here. Thank you. As Jin Wu happily took the drawing, their fingertips brushed. It may have been a tiny action, but the biggest events in history often begin with small gestures. Jinchil turned and descended the stairs. This was stupid of me. With the hope of finally catching a break, he'd ended up doing something he'd have a hard time explaining to even the rookie detective. Regret flooded him. It's like the staircase just wants to drag out my humiliation. Gentle grumbled as he made his way down the stairs, but then suddenly he froze. Huh? He'd heard a voice. Do you trust me, President Wu? Unnerved, Gentle looked up and down the stairwell but it was completely empty except for him. It was dead silent during class time. 
Gentle wrinkled his brow as he continued down the stairs. He then heard another voice. Yes, I do. That was his own voice. W.H. What the hell? If he was one to scare easily, he would have fallen to the floor in shock or let out a shriek. Instead, he frowned as he calmly checked his surroundings and brought out his notepad and a pen. Now I'm starting to hear things. Does this, combined with the empty feeling in my heart and seeing the ant monster, mean I'm going clinically insane? He scribbled down his notes, ending with a question. Feeling out of sorts, he quickly stuffed the notepad away, hurried down the stairs, and bolted out of the school as fast as he could. But then Ginchel was hit with another auditory hallucination that threw him into disarray. Then please believe everything I'm about to show you. Arg! Ginchel gritted his teeth and covered his ears. The voice he had never heard and things he had never said began swirling around inside his head. He was overwhelmed with confusion. W.H. What is this? Among all the voices, one phrase stood out. Hunter Jean Wu Sung. Hunter Sung. Then how can we? No, how can I help you? Hunter Sung. Hunter Jean Wu Sung. The name Hunter Jean Wu Sung kept repeating in Jinchel's head. Jean Wu Sung. That's the name of the student I just met, isn't it? Jinchel had heard that patients with mental illnesses, who made up strange stories, tended to pull from the people around them. Was this what was happening to him? He walked unsteadily down the street, his head throbbing. He was in such agony that he couldn't even lift his hands to massage his temples. But at the same time, the hole in his heart seemed to fill little by little every time he thought of Hunter Jean Wusung's name. Jinchel collapsed on a nearby park bench and repeated the name swirling inside his head. Hunter Jean Wusung, Hunter Jean Wusung, Hunter Jean Wusung. It had to be some kind of sign. Jinchel definitely knew the name Jean Wusung. He needed to remember it. He had to grasp hold of the memory. He needed to remember everything he could about Jean Wu and find out why he'd forgotten. MGH! Jinchel persevered through his severe headache until he finally remembered a certain exchange. Do you trust me, President Wu? Yes, I do. Then please believe everything I'm about to show you. Excuse me? Someone touched their finger to Jinchel's forehead. At that precise moment, darkness clouded Jinchel's vision, followed by a barrage of images. They were memories connecting the past, present, and future. They were stories of gates, magic beasts, hunters, rulers, and monarchs. This is insane! How could this be? Jinchel was at a loss for words. Jin Wu, the shadow monarch himself, looked lonely as he answered. It's because a higher being's memories aren't affected by the flow of time. A monarch's memories transcended time itself. Huff, huff! Jinchel was out of breath after the flashback. His mind had been briefly connected to that of a higher being Jin Wu in a timeline that no longer existed. In that instant when he'd come into contact with Jin Wu, the memories that had been sealed somewhere in. Jinchel's soul were brought to the surface once more. Oh my god! With a hole in his heart finally filled, Jinchel began to weep. He remembered the question he'd asked Jean Wu when he heard Jin was plan. Hunter Sung, are you actually planning to fight them? By yourself? And now, the answer to that question was right in front of him. A young man walked by listening to music on his earphones. A couple whispering sweet nothings to each other. An old man walking his dog. People warming up near the exercise equipment. There were no gates, no magic beasts, and no fighting. Jinchel sobbed as he took in the peace created by Jin Wu's own hands. Hunter Sung, you did it. Jinchel cried for a long time as he recalled the screams of those who had been killed by magic beasts. No, I don't have time for this now. 
The veteran detective wiped away his tears with a calloused hand. Jinchul needed Jean Wu to know that though the rest of the world might have forgotten, Jinchul at least knew that Jean Wu had fought for them all. He was overcome with a duty to tell Jean Wu. But at the same time, Jinchul wondered if that was the right thing for Jean Wu or not. He's left his past as a hunter behind and is living as an ordinary student now. If Jean Wu wanted people to know, he'd had so many opportunities to tell Jinchul about their past lives. He could have answered Jinchul's questions or transmitted the memories to him with a touch of his finger like before. Yet despite their coincidental encounter, Jean Wu had sent Jinchul away without a word. Perhaps Jean Wu didn't want his current ordinary life to be disrupted. So wouldn't it be better for Hunter Sung if Jinchul pretended not to know anything, and they both went back to their everyday lives? Jinchul was lost in thought agonizing over it for hours until school let out. When he saw the students walking through the park, Jinchul finally reached a decision. Okay. He would leave the decision in Jin Wu's hands. If Jin Wu continued to play dumb, Jinchul would respect his choice. However, if Jin Wu showed even the tiniest reaction, Jinchul hurriedly made his way back to Jin Wu's school and waited even as it seemed all the students had already left. He had a gut feeling that Hunter Sung was still inside the school. Many minutes and several cigarettes later, I just don't want you to miss any competitions because of them. I promise I won't. Jinchul spotted Jin Wu passing the main gate. Happy to see Jin Wu, he strode toward him. Hunter Jin Wu Sung, bottom. He mustered up every bit of courage he had to say those words. His heart raced as he awaited Jin Wu's reaction. Sure enough, Jin Wu stiffened in shock and turned around. How? Jin Wu's eyes told Jin Chul everything he needed to know, and the detective fought back tears. It really is you, Hunter Sung. The two men moved to the park near the school where Jinchul's memories of the past had returned to him. The small pond in the middle of the park was dyed gold by the reflection of the sunset. Jinchul stopped walking and spoke first. I'm worried I've messed things up for you and your friends. Jin Wu shook his head, smiling lightly. They're good people, extremely competitive, but... When Jinchul had asked Jin Wu for his time, Jin Wu had to excuse himself from the seniors. Since they'd already made plans, the older kids might have been upset, but instead, Don't be too late. We'll take Young Gil hostage until you show up. Wait, what? The rest of the track team went ahead, dragging poor Young Gil along. Jin Wu chuckled as he remembered Young Gil's alarmed expression. I can't stay too long since my friend's life is at stake. Seeing Jin Wu doing well put a smile on Jin Chul's face, too. I understand. Then I'll get straight to the point. His smile dropped. How long? Did you fight against them in the rift between dimensions? Officially, Jin Wu had disappeared for two years. But Jin Chul knew from the Shadow Monarch's memories how formidable the Monarchs were. He knew very well it wasn't possible to defeat them in that short a time. Jin Wu answered cautiously. 27 years. This answer knocked the wind out of Jin Chul. Jin Wu had spent nearly 30 years in a place where nothing could exist, battling their enemies the entire time. He couldn't even begin to imagine how taxing the battle must have been. He was at a loss for words, then barely managed to get out. Do you regret it? Jin Wu answered without any hesitation. No. This was the one thing Jin Wu was confident about. I'd make the same decision over and over again. Going to a baseball game with his dad on his day off. Eating his mom's wonderful soybean paste stew. Jaina's blinding smile, unmarred by the fear of magic beasts. Every little thing was invaluable to him. If the price he had to pay was to take on this burden alone. Jin Wu would do it again gladly. 
I have absolutely no regrets. The calm in Jinwa's voice moved Jinchul. He considered expressing his thanks, but swallowed his words. They weren't enough to properly express how he felt toward Jin Wu. Jinchul looked down at his watch as he remembered Young Gil being held hostage, then looked back up at Jin Wu. It looks like you're enjoying your life now. Jin Wu laughed. It's fun so far, except for the fact that I consciously change my physical appearance every now and then because I don't age anymore. Everlasting youth and immortality. Hunter Jin Wu Sung had become the shadow monarch and gained the power of a god. Despite the strength he wielded, Jin Wu had decided to live like an ordinary human. Have you thought about what you want to do in the future? Not yet. Then, how about joining me? Jinchul showed Jin Wu the police ID in his wallet. You mean, a police officer? A lot of brutal criminals have been coming in recently. Something about a shadow monster? Jin Wu inspected Jinchul's ID and then returned his wallet with a smile. If I became a police officer, there wouldn't be anything left for other officers to do. We're doing our best to make it that kind of world. Jinchul hadn't changed. He conducted himself as a detective the same way he had as the head of the surveillance team and later president of the Hunters Association. I'll think about it. Jin Wu seemed to be growing concerned for his friend's well-being, so Jinchul bade him goodbye. I'll be waiting for you. Please don't. I've heard police officers work hard but don't get paid much. With a wave, Jin Wu walked away. Jinchul smiled as he watched him go. Work hard but don't get paid much, huh? Jin Wu's accurate and irrefutable assessment made Jinchul laugh. At the same time, he thought of the rookie detective who had joined the unit despite the circumstances. Is he off duty today? Jinchul figured he owed the rookie a meal. Jinchul gave a deep bow to Jin Wu, who was now a small outline in the far distance. As the only one who knew of Jin Wu's sacrifice, Jinchul sincerely expressed his gratitude on behalf of everyone in the world for the first and possibly last time.